Shots are also now available even sooner. Originally, it was six months after your uh, fully vaccinated second dose. Uh, now it's three months after your second Pfizer dose or two months after your dose of Johnson & Johnson. So let's unpack the rationale behind these changes with Professor Tulio de Oliveira. He's director of the Center for Epidemic Response and Innovation. Uh, Prof, thank you so much for your time. So I have to ask, is a mix and match approach better than keeping to one type of COVID vaccine. And I ask this because I am now due, and so is Shahad, for our booster shots. Should we stay with Pfizer or should we go to Johnson & Johnson? Because there are different technologies and, and one would presume uh, that maybe you get a different type of protection. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sally, and, and also thank Shahad. So, so basic, what, what, what we learn is that they both both vaccines that we have in South Africa are very effective eh? and seem that South Africa have done a good choice of, of, of vaccines. Yeah. What we know from, from around the world is that the, the booster, it is, it, it's really necessary, especially before a new wave of infections, yeah, because, because that can really protect against hospitalization and that's and my suggestion it's everyone that 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 allow it to take the booster and as Sally highlight the time was decreased that take yeah and and because then we can prepare to this potentially winter wave yeah in relationship which one it is better what 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 a lot of science in the world have shown is that the the mix and match which which a lot of that science came from especially from the uk because they have different uh, vaccine platform seem to be very effective yeah so 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 for example if people that had pfizer they they went to decide to have a joint and Johnson that would be effective yeah as a, as a booster and the other way around as well as having the same vaccine so it's almost to try to really encourage people to 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 really be able to select and we increasing vaccination before this potential third wave all right so are you saying that it actually is quite a good idea to mix and match is that what you're going to do or is that what you're doing so 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 I personally I had two doses of, of of the Johnson Johnson. Yeah, we start as 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 based on the Sisonki as part of the of the of the healthcare workers and the essential workers. Yeah. And 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 what what I will personally do, I still have to wait an, a, a, another few days. And then and then I potentially gonna have a, a Pfizer sh shot before 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 the winter wave yeah one thing that we found is that the mrna they they, they produce very high li level antibodies but they also can decrease quite quite quick yeah and that's potentially why 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 the mix and match may be a quite a, a good idea yeah so so one and i personally will take the the other vaccine just 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 for fun to see <laughs> what's the kind of antibodies that we will have yeah but the main thing is that most of people that that will be vaccinated even with with a second dose or a booster especially like a few months before the next wave they they will be protected and that's what we should be looking especially as as we we want to go back to normal life so so for example, I'm here now in Stellenbosch University. It's very exciting to see the whole campus coming into life, yeah, and the students and going to classes. It's quite it's quite exciting seeing mm. life going to back to normal. And 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 I personally think that's a small thing to, to get a booster so so we can try to to ride this 50 wave quite well. Do we need to be still considering vaccine mandates in this country? Because we know that we're out of the, the fourth wave, uh, that there's enough immunity, whether naturally acquired or through vaccinations, enough of us actually also getting the jabs and prepared to get the jabs perhaps, uh, to keep this uh, virus at bay, even if it mutates again to something slightly more serious. Do you think that the vaccine mandate discussion is, is a bit of a waste of time at this stage? So, uh, yeah, South Africa has selected not to go with a vaccine mandate as the country. Yeah, again, 
as we know in this pandemic, all the all the decisions have the positives and negatives. Yeah, but I think that the main thing that we should be doing is to encourage people to get vaccination, especially before the winter. That's the main thing. Yeah, we know that some uh, work environments have have decided on the vaccine mandate. Yeah, at the moment, even at the universities that have discussed that is still a, a not big mandate. And of course, that the best thing is to encourage and not to, to, to Monday think. And that's, mm. I think, what we should be focusing on is to encourage people to get vaccinated so we can really go back to, to a normal year eh? because this year starts quite well. We managed South Africa to ride quite well this Omicron wave. Yeah, and it would be fantastic if it continues quite well and, and, and we can really go back to normal right. life. Yeah. Two last quick questions. You are constantly monitoring what this virus is doing. We know that there's been a subvariant of Omicron doing the rounds. Uh, a, is that anything to worry about or any other uh, variants or mutations that you're seeing? And secondly, what is your view on whether we're ready to lose the masks? Because a lot of people are saying, oh, really, it's time now. Okay, so... so so the first one against the, the, the sub-variant, at, at, at this moment, South Africa, most of the infections in South Africa that we have genomic data is the subvariant, the BA.2. Yeah, to be honest, we had we had a big meeting discussing that at the World Health Organization. Yeah, I participate in this technical working group of virus evolution. At the moment, the main take-home message is that we are alerted but not concerned. What it means, alerted? It means that we are really looking very careful. We are, we are really developing the science. Some fantastic uh, results came two days ago from the NICD, the National Institute for Communicable Disease, that showed that these two, the, the, both the classical Omicron, if you can call that, which is now called BA1, and the BA2 Omicron, they have the same disease severity. What it means, one do not cause more disease than the other. We also know from data from South Africa, from Denmark, from England, that the vaccines are uh, is still effective. But what we also know is that this BA2 is light more transmissible and that's one of the main reasons why we don't see our infections going down to very low numbers so so, so we are hovering with that one two three thousand infections a day in South Africa but at the moment we are not concerned because we don't see increase of hospitalization very much, uh, Professor Tulio de Oliveira, Director of the Centre uh, for Epidemic Research. That's in Stanovosh and also from CRISP, which is the Centre for Research and Innovation Sequencing Platform in uh, KwaZulu-Natal.